I think theater is unique as an art form because it is the one art form in which the audience and the creators of the theater, the theater makers, the artists, are in the same room breathing the same air. That is unusual because if you think about, you know, going to a film, it's on celluloid. If you think about going to a museum, the painting is on the wall, but the artist is not there. In the theater, the artist is in the room. And it's a shared space. It's a shared experience. And to me, that uh, distinguishes theater from, from other art forms. I think it was like in 1860 or 1880 or something, Henry Gibson said, uh, the theater will be dead in 100 years. Um, and, um, of course, it never dies. And people keep saying this every generation. The theater is going to die. We have television now. We have streaming services, you know, all those kinds of things. But people still want to go into the theater. And granted, post-pandemic, people are going back into the theaters much more slowly than they've ever gone into theaters before. But uh, I hope that um, that desire returns to its former vigor and, and grows even more vigorous because of that beauty of of being able to be in the same space as the artists and it's a different kind of energy that's produced because of that hello i am belina hasu houston i am a writer with the odyssey theater ensemble's writers odyssey writers affinity group if you want to learn more about the odyssey theater ensembles please listen to this interview i think it's very true that that theater in order to attract audience back into the theaters and to grow those audiences they have to be courageous about the material that they present. One of the things that I've noticed recently, and this is um, something that, that distinguishes the Odyssey Theater Ensemble's approach to, to writing groups, with most writing groups in the city of Los Angeles and maybe in other cities too, it seems that there is an interest in uh, writers who are under 30 or under 25, which is a different kind of ageism. So a lot of theaters don't want to work with playwrights who are older. When I first was talking with the Odyssey, my instinct was, okay, I should provide them with a lot of uh, resumes of playwrights who are under 30 or under 25, because that's what everybody does. But in reality, they were interested in established veteran playwrights. And it's kind of the notion of, if you need to get your car fixed, do you go to a mechanic who just finished school or do you go to a mechanic who knows his way around an engine? I know my way around an engine. And I would say that all of the playwrights in the Odyssey Theater Ensemble's writing group, Writers Odyssey, they know their way around engines. And I will take my car to them first if it needs fixing. <laughs> I think it's important for voices of different kinds to be heard in the American theater. I've always thought that long before you know, the society turned its attention towards issues of uh, inclusion and equity in a very visceral way. Of course, some might say that I think that way because I'm a female, number one, and secondly, because I'm you know, Japanese, Black, Portuguese, Native American, Spanish. <laughs> but the reality is that our society is multicultural. It always has been because Everyone in the United States has ancestral roots in another country. That has been how this country has been built, except for, of course, Native Americans who were here before everybody else. So um, I feel that if we're going to, I feel that it empowers us as a nation to embrace all of the different cultures that make us who we are and that continue to define who the United States, what or who the United States is. So because of that, I think it's it's just as important for that to be reflected in the theater as well. Um, when I go to see a play, I don't need to go to see a play that is exactly my culture's. And in fact, I probably would never find that play. I want to be told a good story. I just think that in the opening up to diverse voices in the theater, we hear different kinds of stories. There are so many interesting stories to be mined from cultures that are not, you know, uh, white heterosexual male cultures, and that's just that is not to say that that culture isn't part of that tapestry because it is. It's just simply it's not excluding or cutting something out of the tapestry. It's simply broadening it and allowing it to be um, more complicated, uh, which I think leads, you know, to interest. I mean, you know, in in my own family, I've talked about, you know, my 
the ethnicities brought together by my parents, but my husband is uh, from Northern England, you know, and my brother-in-law, his ancestors are from China. You know, my son is marrying into uh, Vietnamese culture. Uh, my my daughter's uh, partner is Irish and Italian. So there are many different cultures around the table. And that isn't the issue whenever we think of ourselves as, you know, community within the larger community. The, the issue is who we are as people. And I think that I hope that we get to a point where uh, that is the case in the theater, too, so that people don't have to say, oh, I'm going to go see a woman's play. Oh, I'm going to go see an Asian American play. Oh, you know, so that it's like that. It's like I am going to see a play and it is about X. And that's interesting to me. And so I think that moving towards that, just like we do with food, you know, I mean, people talk about cultural appropriation and uh, well, a lot of Americans eat sushi and drink green tea. <laughs> and those are Japanese cultural things. So if we thought about, you know, art and representations in art, the same way we think about food, just think how limiting it would be if we couldn't go to a restaurant that was not of our own ethnic background. <laughs> you know, I mean, who doesn't like sushi and green tea or Mexican food or Italian food? I mean, I'm not Italian. I love Italian food, you know? So, so I think that we just have to think more broadly about art in the way that we do about theater. Um, I think that cultural appreciation in the terms of how we approach cuisine, maybe in the future can teach us a lot about how we think about art and the representation of cultures. Uh, I, I think that a lot of the, the pushback for that is because historically people from non-white male heterosexual cultures have not been able to tell their own stories or if you will cook their own food uh so i i think that that's part of uh, the pushback and i completely understand that and support that uh, but but i think that for me coming from a very multicultural family it's my hope that uh that we can all eat at the same table and enjoy the food from all over the place. <laughs> I first began my relationship with the Odyssey way back in the late 1980s. So I think it was 1991, uh, the Odyssey Theater Ensemble produced my play T. And it ran, I think, for about nine months. It was a long run for a play in Los Angeles. And uh, the, at some point we had to recast the play because we lost some of the actors in the original five who were in the play. And then it was recast again and again. And, and the Odyssey kept running it. Um, so as long as, and the audiences kept coming too, that was the thing, of course. And then at some point uh, we held auditions to recast it and not enough actresses came to the auditions. So they had to plan on closing the show. Then they produced another play of mine, maybe I can't remember the specific year, but uh, a little bit later in the 90s. And it was uh, my play Kokoro, which ran for six months. And again, it was a nice long run. Many people coming into the theater to see it. And then eventually it stopped for the same reasons, which was um, it couldn't be you know, recast. So I had two very positive production experiences with the Odyssey early in my career. And uh so I was aware of them from the very beginning of my career. And then when we, when society, when this disruption occurred in society where people started thinking about um, uh, hate against Asian Americans and anti-blackness and things like that, um, Sally and I started talking about things. And Sally is a person who is, um, um, already involved in the community in, in many different kinds of ways, exposed to many different kinds of, of cultures and, and perspectives on living. So we began to have conversations, which brought me back into the Odyssey. And I'd always ha been on very friendly terms with them. And their vigor had always impressed me because um, through every, you know, calamity that might be occurring in society, it continued to produce meaningful theater and engage theater artists. And, and then I also was impressed with the fact that they didn't have the uh, this attitude of ageism that, that I had been confronted with at many theaters. So as I um, 
I, I like to say that when I was a younger playwright, the issues were racism and sexism. I was always being confronted with that. Those were the fences. And then as I got older, ageism was added to the pot. So it was like between racism, sexism, ageism, I felt like I was always trying to jump over a hurdle. So it was actually refreshing to learn that the Odyssey was not an ageist theater. And for a, uh, a leading, vibrant theater to not be ageist in these life and times was very meaningful to me. And um, also there, what, what Sally had to say in terms of, of culture, race, um, and, and female culture as well was refreshing to me too. So putting all those things together brought Writer's Odyssey into fruition. I would tell artists to get involved with Odyssey Theater Ensemble because I think that by creating Writer's Odyssey, the theater has really, if you will, shown its its colors. I mean, it's saying we are continually evolving and we want the world to know that we embrace these ideas of equity and inclusion in a very real way. So I feel that uh, with what they put on their stages, who they engage as artists, and now with the creation of their first ever writers group, I, I think that they continue to do things to say that we are aware of um, society and we want to engage the community. That's the only way to move forward. Theater, like many art forms in this country, um, give us something that we can't get from any other source. I mean, my my son is a medical doctor, and of course, I know that you know medicine can save lives. But I also feel that theater can save lives. I feel that art can save lives. Theater has a transformative power to uh, to come into our hearts, minds, and souls, and makes it make us think about things differently. And that is what I have experienced at the Odyssey. Um, I've experienced with the productions I've seen, and now I'm experiencing it in this wonderful writer's affinity group, which is unlike any other group I've been involved in. So I think it's uh, important that that kind of work is supported. And, and we think about, you know, for example, um, making donations to museums, you know, to the opera, to, to film. Um, yes, those are all important, but I, I also think it's important to, to donate and support theaters and, um, I think that's important because of the growth that they can bring to us as, as human beings. As a female multicultural person of color, I'm just very honored and uh, happy that the Odyssey Theater Ensemble has had the wherewithal to create a group like Writer's Odyssey and embrace uh, voices that uh, have not been represented in the theater as well as I think that they should have been given the multicultural nature of this country. I am Valina Hasu Houston. I am a writer and I am involved with the Odyssey Theater Ensemble's Writers Odyssey, which is a writer's affinity group. My call to action is that you do come to the theater, engage with the artists, support the theater, and most of all, be kind to each other.